Hey guys, Octane Restorations here, and we are back with the 1996 GL1500 Goldwing Special Edition. Let's go ahead and let's get this car back inside the motorcycle. As you remember, those throttle plates were sticking, and now they're snapping right back into place, which is exactly what we wanted. And the installation is pretty much a reverse order of the removal. I know it sounds silly, like isn't the installation always a reverse order of the removal, but this one start to finish is pretty much the exact same step. So before we actually put it on the car boots, we're going ahead and connect the throttle bodies, etc. While the carburetor was off, I just wanted to test the fuel pump real quick. So I have my 150 amp battery jump starter that I got from Tractor Supply. Hook that up to the battery. And whenever you turn the key and the engine kill switch position is on run, theoretically, the fuel pump should prime. In this case, it did not because the fuel pump is bad. So, just something we gotta deal with, but that's just what we we're testing right here. There, I just used a shop vac to vacuum out any dirt or debris that might be in the area. I don't want to knock any of that in the engine. Right there what I did is I sprayed white lithium grease on the car boots itself. That's just a little trick I learned that'll help them seat up. Right now I'm putting on the throttle cables onto the throttle plate. It is kind of a pain, but doing it when the carburetor is not on the car boots, seated in the car boots is way easier. Right here, you know I'm doing the cruise control cables and the choke as both of those are located on the back of the carburetor. Also located on the back of the carburetor are those two antifreeze lines that run from the radiator to the bottom of the carburetor. As you can see, there are a lot and lot of hoses. <laughs> the most invaluable tool is going to be these needle nose pliers that you see there. Again, Harbor Freight has them. Also get you some straight needle nose pliers and you can get nearly anything on. You know how I just said to buy some of those different needle nose pliers? Well, for this piece right here, you're really going to need it. Whenever you're putting the air box back on, that hose that I'm touching right there, and there's also two more hoses in the front, and all of these have to go onto the air box. We successfully seated the carburetor on the boots. As you can see right there, throttle's hooked up and it's still snappy. You can see it kind of moving up in the top right there so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tighten those nuts up the easiest way to seat these is like i said with the lithium grease uh, to get to the antifreeze lines in the back these 45 degree pliers from harbor freight i recommend maybe filing them down if you think the lines are old because you do not want to puncture and have to replace one of these <laughs> it is not a fun day so I have a pair of pliers that I use just for this application that I filed the teeth down so they won't puncture it. But lithium grease on the boots and then just some firm pressure. And that's the way you get them seated. Now I'm cleaning everything up and we're getting ready to put the air filter box back on. There are those two hoses that I were talking about that are a pain and that's what I was doing there. One thing you can do while your airbox is off is you can go ahead and top off your antifreeze. It actually comes with a little dipstick, as you can see right there. It says coolant gauge, coolant level gauge. But this one was completely dry. As you remember, we kind of spilt all of it out on the ground whenever we were taking off the carburetor with those two antifreeze lines. So we are gonna go ahead and top it off. This is O'Reilly's brand 50-50. It's already pre-mixed with distilled water. Universal antifreezing coolant. This one's safe on all engines, all makes, all models, it says. You have to get an antifreeze that is silicate free. Read the back. This one says it right there. It's silicate and phosphate free. The silicates inside the antifreeze is bad for aluminum engines. Theoretically. Some people say it's good for aluminum engines. Some people say it's bad but going off of the manufacturer's recommendations which is honda they say do not use antifreeze that has silicates in it 
Some people agree it causes corrosion. Some people disagree and say it actually leaves a film that protects it. I'm just saying what the manufacturer Honda recommends and they recommend silicate free antifreeze. This one I believe is an ethylene glycol based. It's the green antifreeze, which I, you know, I love the green antifreeze. I've had no problem running it. I'm just gonna fill it up until I get it on the medium level in my dipstick. As you can see, we got some. Remember, don't check this while it's hot because <laughs> it'll be pressurized and it'll blow everywhere and it could potentially burn you. So we're gonna finish going ahead and putting on this air box after we get that cap on. The hardest part with putting the air box, like I showed you, were those hoses that you have to attach to the air box and they are a pain. I think the first time I did it, it took me, I don't know, probably 30, 45 minutes just to get those hoses on. Ugh, frustrating. There is that little hose on the back that you gotta remember to put back on the air box. But it doesn't screw in, it just clips in. We got everything back on, got the carburetor in, got all the lines hooked up. Theoretically, <laughs> theoretically we did it all right. All the... 40 million different lines coming off of this two carburetor but that's it for this episode i know this is a shorter video this one's only about eight minutes long normally my videos are 20 30 minutes but just breaking it up as parts i think is the easiest way to do this and this was a good stopping point because we got the carburetor back on the motorcycle so thanks again for watching like i said i've got more videos coming more videos of this gl 1500 special edition we're doing a full restoration, getting it running on the road, everything like that. Next video, we will actually be replacing the fuel pump, so stay tuned for that. It's not that difficult to do, but a lot of these gold wings need fuel pump replacements, so might help you down the road. Once again, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It actually really does help. Soctane Restorations, thank you.